Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with a simple Moonport resupply mission to make sure that our Kerbals around the Moon, five of them on board Moonport 1 right now, have enough supplies so that we can get through our next slate of activities. Uh, maneuver for the Pluto Ambassador, MAPSAT 1, MAPSAT 1A, and uh, maybe the Mars and Jupiter missions that we want to launch in those windows. I, I want to get through all of that and so obviously our supplies on board Moonport 1 are not sufficient for that. Hence this launch. So here we go. Run Fiji 2-1 and hopefully everything will be smooth. Okay we have ignition and launch. Okay, we are on our way. So obviously I've been posting a bunch of stock videos recently with the release of KSV 1.4. And just a reminder, if you do want to see me play more Realism Overhaul, I do stream on Twitch, Realism Overhaul on Sundays. And in particular we do a collaborative career mode right now. And so I'm, I'm managing a career mode like this with RP0 and everything and uh, the audience submits crafts for that career mode. So that happens and of course occasionally I build the craft myself but uh, for the most part it's viewer submitted craft that we are launching. We are uh, pretty much in the same place right now actually. Uh, maybe a little bit behind what I am uh, in this series right here. We're I believe about to launch the Voyager window missions, so about two years behind. My Twitch activities though, that career mode uh, uh, sequence is in KSP 1.2.2. I have been posting videos of it before, but it got too unwieldy to continue posting videos of it, so I just let it continue as a purely Twitch thing. I didn't think people were particularly interested in the YouTube videos of it anyway. but. Uh, editing a huge Twitch live streams into like 20 minute videos is not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, one engine is out. We are down to that one engine. In theory it's uh, limit g-forces, which this doesn't really need when it's uncrewed. But I guess we should probably keep the launch script the same way. Okay, and first stage out. Second stage is lit. All good. And because this is configured for crude launches, there was no fairing indicated, so I'll manually separate the fairing now. All right. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. And everything looks fine as far as our remaining fuel is concerned. Gonna extend the commutrons just for old time's sake, if it'll allow me. And that one's locked too. Interesting. Okay, well, anyway, whichever ones want to extend, that's fine. As long as we get the solar panels extended. Okay, we're a little late tur turning towards the node, but it should be fine. It should be fine. Come on, turn. Alright, close enough. Ignition. Okay, and... Shut down. Alright, let's see what's going on. We aren't quite there yet, but RCS perhaps will help. Okay, it's a bit iffy, but I think we have our lunar approach there. Yep, that should be fine. Matching the target orbit there. Okay, iffy, but hopefully alright. Okay. Yeah, okay, not my favorite situation, but let's get on with it. And get over there. So... Probably I should have done the final adjustment be uh, after decoupling, but 
Here we are, decouple. Okay, that should be good. Let's start time warping. All right, everyone, we've entered Lunar SOI with Moonport Resupply, and you'll note that I'm not controlling that vessel right now because in the course of uh, looking through things and, you know, targeting Moonport 1 and everything, um, I, I discovered this mission, Quarter Pounder, and I was wondering whether it was something that I should be deleting the tracking station because it'd be gone by now. It's got pretty low periapsis, so you could think that maybe the gravitational variations around the moon would eventually bring it down. But it's curious to me because um, we've got we've got RCS. We've got 2,551 meters per second, which is enough to land it. So we can land it. And it's got supplies, food, water, and oxygen. And I don't know why it's here. I don't know why it's not already landed somewhere or doing something useful. Did I just forget about it? Or was there some problem with it? I'm not sure. I feel like it shouldn't be here. So, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting point. But if anything, this is, of course, should land on the surface of the moon to resupply our our surface base. We don't really need to do that right now. I could also dock it to the station and use it to resupply the station instead because the station is in more dire need of food, water, and oxygen. Um, the base has more than 300 days. So I don't know. This is curious, but I'm going to just focus on the mission that I was planning to do. This is completely topped up, which is bizarre. So, yeah, it's just, I did not expect to see this here. And I'm puzzled. But, yes, let's focus on the mission that I was supposed to be doing right now. Okay, we are approaching our maneuver node to make orbit around the moon and also correct the inclination with respect to the station. And we should probably ignite our engines. And we could probably wait a little bit longer. Right around there, maybe. Let's start. Okay, the good old Gemini lander engines, of course. In my stream, people want me to make a new model of it. After all, it is very useful with its wonderful qualities, but people don't like the model of it. I like the model of it. I still maintain that the nozzle goes inside and there's actually a combustion chamber right at the top there that's really small. But people don't buy that for some reason. Okay, I see the close approach distance coming down there. And... Well, it's going to be about 15 kilometers on this one. Okay, though. Let's proceed. Mild inclination correction gets us to about 2.7 kilometers. Boo, don't go too fast. Okay, Apollo docking system. Let's go for Apollo docking system. I have to be careful not to dock like I dock on a stock vessel. Stock is much more forgiving on the whole docking thing and magnetism and everything. But I think I've got it. It is a little bit off, but but okay. Alright, it is docked. And how's the life support now? Well, 278 days uh, minimum. And as far as our alarms are concerned, that covers us through Jupiter. The Jupiter transfer window. So okay, job done. There is still a mystery about the quarter pounder, but I'll leave that be for now. Alright, so let's turn to other things. Okay, well I've reconsidered. I took a look at what we have to do, and there's not really much until this maneuver with the Pluto Ambassador, and that's 58 days. That's a long time. So, I'm gonna try and land the Quarter Pounder after all, and we're going to have to wait until our base, which is right there, is under the Quarter Pounder's orbit, which seems possible. I am trying to keep it trim in this install now, deleting all the old crafts, 
which is a shame, really, but because they're sort of like a running record of what's go been going on, but uh, I've had to delete practically all of them. And it gets really laggy if there's more than 50 craft right now. Okay, well, whatever the problem was, it was in misconfigured RCS ports. Let's get the gear down. Don't know why I'm not hearing the landing gear. Oh, maybe that was a chatterer thing. No, that should be a stock thing, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I know. Okay, I, I understand why this was left alone here. Finally. Okay, it's because the tanks had feed pressure too low. Okay, well, just so I don't get confused again, I'm going to put this on suborbital with the RCS ports. Oh, but I guess we were leaving it. Okay, so I'm going to rename it is what I'm going to do. Rename vessel emergency supplies. But really, we should probably get rid of it just to clean up the save again. Because we've got so many active missions, right? These are all heading out and we have to keep track of them. And obviously they have to stay. Having another thing just floating around doing nothing in particular. Depots, if they're not attached to a station, aren't very useful. So yeah. But anyway, that's what that was. Alright, now that I've cleared that up, let's move along. Alright, here we are with the Pluto Ambassador and we're passing by Jupiter now. This was just a dummy maneuver uh, to make sure that we checked up on it. And we'll also get rid of the alarm. We've uh, completed a few sciences now. Long-term habitation. We're going to have actuators complete and I think there was another one. So after this, maybe we should check up on the tech tree to see where we're at right now. I've done some time warping. Uh, the Mars window is in 139 days now. And I'm building, well, some interesting stuff, really. Uh, I decided that we needed a spaceport around Mars, uh, similar to the ones we have around Earth and the Moon. So there's a Mars port 1 under, well, it's already been built. And we've, of course, got a Mars base one that we're going to send over there. Marsport 1 has a heavier rocket, as you can see, 551. Well, I hope you guys uh, know what a Fiji 551 would be. But uh, I'll leave you for that right now. Uh, we'll get to that when we see it. And uh, we've got a backup Marsport 1. If both of them actually make it over there, we can join the two together. And then we'll have a larger Marsport. We've also got a Jove port. That one is much smaller because it has to be sent out all the way over to Jupiter. And I don't know exactly where that's going to end up. But once it gets here, if we can launch this Jovian demon, which is similar to our transfer demon, and so it has uh, a nuclear engine on it, uh, hopefully it will be able to tug Jove port 1 to a somewhat different orbit, maybe even uh, into orbit around one of the moons of Jupiter. So we'll see. So that's all stuff that's getting constructed. And we can construct quite a lot of stuff very quickly now. We've got three build slots, as you can see. And they're operating at a fair clip. And actually, by, uh, you can see they're all going to be done well ahead of when the transfer window is. So we've got a lot of time to build a whole lot more, frankly. And maybe too much more. Then again, we have a huge budget, so we might as well. A Fiji 551 costs about... Uh, even with the payload, it's like 120,000. So we could launch ooh, 150 of them, I think, which is a lot of Fiji 551s. So we're just passing by Jupiter, Jupiter here, not doing anything. And we want to make sure that the Pluto ambassador... Oh, and I had turned on ignore max temp when I turned to it because we didn't want the RTGs exploding on us. And... Uh, yeah, we just want to make sure that everything is all right for Pluto, which is where this is going to end up. I don't think there's any benefit to doing any instruments. We've done most of the sciences around here. Let's see. Uh, let's try a dummy transmission just to make sure that we can. Okay, it looks like the antenna is working. And we've got four goo containers. I don't know if we need all four for... Maybe we should do one over here. I mean, I don't think we'll need all four for, well, it's only recovery value, so let's forget it. Let's forget, we'll just leave it all for Pluto. Well, yeah, I mean, Pluto also has moons, 
Uh, well, I think without RSS expanded, it only has one moon. It has Sharon, right? Let's see. Let's make sure it has a moon. It doesn't have a moon. Does no, it does. It does. So our four good containers would be high over Pluto, low over Pluto, and if we could swing by Sharon, we could do high and low. We certainly wouldn't want to miss that if we can manage that, but that's a tough one to make sure of. Okay, passing by Jupiter. So now we are on our way out. And I believe we have the Pluto encounter. I thought I saw it. And we could do with an adjustment now. Now that we've passed Pluto, uh, Jupiter, we could probably tweak this a little bit. Arrange for a tweak. Let's say a mid-course adjustment somewhere four years from now. If you're wondering how much it would take to get into orbit, let's check that out. Well, frankly, too much. Pluto doesn't have the kind of influence that the other gas giants have. I mean, the gas giants have. 9,000 there. And of course, part of it is because we're going so fast. Hey, uh, that's a Sharon encounter right there. Hmm. Well, if that's a Sharon encounter right there, maybe we'd be better off swinging by on the opposite side of Pluto than we're coming in on. That's still 9,000 right there. Let's see. I mean, let's let's see if we can hit... Oh, there we go. There we have a flyby of Sharon. Well, if we don't encounter Sharon, we get two. High and low over Pluto, but no Sharon. If we do get this encounter with Sharon, we can swing a low over Sharon. And so we get three. We'll get high over Pluto. We'll get high over Sharon and low over Sharon. So I think this is a better deal. Even though we'll be missing the low over Pluto. Okay, so that's the plan. And I'm going to add an alarm with that maneuver node in four years. So we'll be back to take a look at what's happening with this particular probe at that time. Alright, so here is our tech tree and we've got 6,400 signs sitting in the account. But I was mainly saving up to get colonization and advanced colonization. Now that I have long-term habitation, what we need is advanced logistics, which looks like we're going to need storage technology, which requires actuators, which I am currently unlocking in three days. So we're going to have to go through storage technology, logistics, advanced logistics. Then we get colonization. Yeah, I have the USI colonization parts. Um, mystery to me why they're not... Well, they're here in long-term habitation. Maybe I don't need the whole colonization, advanced colonization after all. Maybe we just got what we wanted. We've got inflatable habitats. Hmm, very interesting, especially for Mars stuff. We should launch an additional module for the station with an inflatable habitat, or maybe a Mars cycler even. Well, I'll have to think about that. We certainly have time to build it. But let's fill out some of the more interesting parts of our tech tree. I'll get large segmented solids just for the heck of it. Oh, it's already being researched. Improved sol improved solids. Probably this stuff shouldn't be here. None of it. I'll have to... That's why it's not RP0. We'll have to move it somewhere else. Mature turbo fans. I don't see why the dragon capsule is there. But... I'd like that. Um... A lot of the interesting command modules don't seem to be here because I don't have SSTU in particular. SSTU has uh, the Orion capsule, which we could use. Really, I think that capsule should be over here. So I'll wait until I move stuff around a bit to more appropriate places before I unlock stuff related to it. Nuclear power. Well, I mean... Says not RP0, but I can see how that would be helpful for a station around Jupiter, for instance. Even around Mars, but probably less so. Nerva 2. 
and the thermal launch nozzle. Well, this is getting into serious stuff here. Still 60 ignitions for some reason. Heavy as all heck. A little bit more thrust, but still 60 ignitions. What can I say? Well, let's get standardish stuff first then. Mature stage combustion will get us... Oh, it's already being researched. Advanced rocketry will get us Merlin things. That one that we haven't been researching. Nano lathing is required for refined stage combustion. And there's that refined stage combustion and refined rocketry. We can get refined rocketry. That's got some interesting stuff. Including our first methane engine courtesy of KSB Interstellar. And I do think that that's a good place for it to be. If you've got the Estes engine, Perios booster... Perios booster is supposed to be here, apparently. It's not non-RP0. I think uh, there's a methane engine that burns at uh, 1,425 kilonewtons with some throttling. Uh, Pressure-fed, 500 ignitions, 368. Basically, basically, this is like a half of a Raptor engine. I think we can do that, and that that would be a good thing to have. But this refined staged combustion, which is just the RD-180 and RD-191, that requires this nanolathing, which is here. Which on its own isn't very helpful. Oddly, an Atlas fuel tank has been placed here. Advanced metalworks. Well, I'll take that. I'll take the nano lathing. Oh, well, we can't. Okay, yeah, we can. And then refined stage combustion. Okay, we've got the whole works here. I better not spend any more. I'm going on a spending spree here. So that's all queued up, and it'll take a while to unlock. Ah, with the completion of actuators, I decided to try and get storage technology and logistics, and I just realized why we need advanced colonization. We need it to get recycling because that's where the recyclers are. So, yeah, we're going to need advanced logistics, 1,500, then colonization, 1,000, then advanced colonization, 2,500. So that's 4,750. Then we get recycling. Yeah, so that's why we need to go there. Anyway, I've started that anyway. We've unlocked storage technology and logistics. Well, we're, we are going to unlock those. And we'll re research that as well. Advanced logistics. Then we just need colonization. I'll even queue that up. And we can focus on... Oh, well, advanced colonization requires orbital megastructures. Ah, uh, we've got a lot of work to do. You've got a lot of work to do before we get recycling technology. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Lots of stuff. Exotic alloys, off-world robotics, orbital assembly. Well, that makes sense. And orbital megastructures. ISS, anyone? Okay. Yeah, we we actually need much more science. You thought 6,000 might be enough? No. Not at all. Okay, here is MapSat 1. It has 4,383 meters per second, and the question is, can we get into orbit around one of Jupiter's moons? It's got a dummy maneuver node right now, so we'll get rid of that. And it will reach periapsis in like 70 days. But we're interested to see what we've got here. Do we need to make... we probably do need to make corrections. But at least it's in the plane relatively flat with respect to the moons. And it's pretty close to Jupiter. Let's see how much it's going to take to capture. Okay. And that is about 600. But that'll leave us in too high an orbit, taking too long to cycle around so that we can meet stuff. Guess not. Okay, so 30, call it 500, 1230, 1600. Well, that's more than we have. 
Well, there's a lot of burns I'm plotting ahead of time. One right now, one at periapsis around Jupiter, one at apoapsis after that, one to bring our orbit down, and finally one to make orbit around Callisto. And a polar orbit is preferable for scanning purposes. Well, okay, let's say we are here. Let me just see how much it takes to make orbit. It's not the best situation, but... 1,007... Okay, how much does that all add up to? We've got so many maneuvers. Let me get a calculator. So, let's say 30... 9, 2. 5,000. Well, it's not looking great, but... Maybe we can do something about it. Plotting ahead of time like this is tough sometimes. Let's just get rid of some of these. And work through it. First things first. This maneuver to get close to Jupiter. And the earlier the better on this. So let's just take care of it. And focusing on Jupiter. Well, we might as well get as close as we can to it. Get rid of that. Well, can't quite reach the X on that. There we go. Um, what's the lowest we can go? 1,550 kilometers is where the atmosphere starts. So, we'll, we'll, let's say 2,000. Okay, well that's pretty much as low as we can go. Well, that's costing more than I thought. But we'll handle the details after we do the burn at periapsis to capture around, orbit, uh, around Jupiter orbit. So I'll add that node. And that gives us some time. So it looks like I really need to spend more time designing stuff and taking a look at what we might construct. So I can't quite move on just yet because all this stuff is going to be built in 10 days and I can't just time warp. 72 days to the next thing we have to do here. So, alright, I'll end the episode here and try and design more stuff to build. Oh, we, we're building stuff so quickly, we've got uh, we got to take advantage of that. And so, with our probe, one probe on its way to Pluto, this probe getting ready to scan the Callisto, hopefully, if it turns out alright. Oh, maybe? No, we didn't lock any special fuel here, unfortunately, so we are seeing the whole Delta V here. And leaving this here for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.